Knock, knock. A cautious knock came at the door. I rubbed my eyes, got out of bed, quickly put on my uniform, and opened the door. What is it? The agent outside the door made a sour face and whispered to me. Uh, sorry to disturb you, sir, but Captain Eli is missing again. My eyes dark with sleep deprivation, I nearly blacked out upon hearing the news. How many times had this occurred this month? Waving the helpless agent away, I took a deep breath to calm down. Just resume your duties. I'll go find him. I quickly washed up, then begrudgingly searched the special task force for Eli. As I hurried through a corridor, I caught a glimpse of a man walking out of the commander's office. I recognized him and immediately came to a halt. It was Captain Gavin. Seeing him in his disheveled uniform, I, I couldn't help but admire him. He and his team had just completed a tough mission with no casualties. Suppressing my excitement, I quickly saluted him. Hello, sir. You're back from your mission? Gavin nodded. He had clearly just come from his debriefing. You're looking for Eli again? Uh, yeah. For some reason, I was embarrassed. We have some files requiring his authorization, but we can't find him anywhere. And his comms seem to be down. Gavin glanced at the brilliant sunlight outside, and an amused glint flashed in his eyes. I know where he is. Come with me. Uh, great. Thank you, sir. I followed Gavin up the stairs, chatting with him about his recent mission. Behind a seldom-used door, we beheld a man lying comfortably out on the white-sloped roof. Captain! Basking in the sunshine, Eli lifted the hat that was covering his face and peered up at us in surprise. Gavin, you're the one who brought him here, right? Eli sat up lazily. I heard that you finished a ten-day mission in only seven days. I've got a lot to do. Gavin replied casually as he took out his phone to check the time. Now that we found you, I gotta go. Eli's eyes lit up, and he said teasingly, What's the rush? Picking someone up from work, huh? Gavin glanced back at him, but didn't deny anything. After Gavin left, I held back my curiosity and got right to business. Captain, there's some paperwork that needs to be signed right away. Eli looked at me and sighed. Look, it's such a nice day. No business talk, okay? I couldn't help but complain. Why can't you be as reliable as Captain Gavin? Eli immediately countered. You know what? Gavin is a lone wolf just like me. He doesn't do any paperwork. But Captain Gavin is very busy, okay? His mission completion rate is the highest in the entire force. He can even finish an operation ahead of schedule no matter how complicated it is. I prattled on about Gavin's accomplishments to Captain Eli. I knew it. I knew you were a Gavin fanboy. Eli lazily fell silent. Give me another five minutes. Watching him lie down again, I sighed. What else could I do? He was my superior officer, after all. I could never have imagined that Gavin would betray the special task force. Loveland City had undergone earth-shattering changes over the past few months. Gavin left STF. There was a vicious flu outbreak. And then there was the Evolution Accelerator Program. Upon receiving the news that Eli had volunteered to become the next test subject, I hurried to the door of the commander's office, waiting for Eli to emerge. It was a rare sunny day, but my mood was not sunny at all. Frankly speaking, I'd been in a bad mood ever since I learned Gavin turned his back on STF. At first, I was overwhelmed with shock and disbelief, as if the pillar that had long supported me had collapsed. I was still a freshman at the academy when I first met Gavin. I had heard rumors of an especially strong senior, who always kept to himself. I remained skeptical until I saw him fight. Gavin fought like a powerful lone wolf, even winning respect from his opponents. So, upon graduation, I followed in his footsteps and joined the Special Task Force.
I used to believe he would always stand firm in his pursuit of justice. Even after recovering from the initial shock, I still couldn't believe Gavin had betrayed us. But the commander's words were crystal clear. Gavin, had he really given up on the side of justice? Squeak! As I was lost in thought, the door at the end of the corridor creaked open. Seeing Eli's solemn expression, I froze for a moment, as I had never seen him like this before. It was as if something heavy weighed on his shoulders, yet he solidly held himself up with determination. Eli was not surprised to see me. I know what you're gonna say. Let's go somewhere else to talk. Full of doubt, I followed him in silence up the stairs, and through the seldom-used door that opened to a place that was not unfamiliar to me. The bright sun shone down on us as we emerged onto the shiny white roof that was Eli's favorite hideout. I was in a daze for a moment. The last time I was here, Gavin was still with us, and Eli had teased him about rushing off to pick up his secret lover. <sighs> so much had changed since then. It felt like a world away. I stayed quiet for a moment before asking my question. Captain, can you please explain to me why you volunteered for the Evolution Accelerator Project? You know the experiment hasn't been perfected, and if the power can't be controlled, it'll be dangerous for everyone. Eli did not respond right away. He looked up at the distant sky, and his disposition gradually became resolute. I have something I want to do. Just like Gavin. Determined, he quickly spouted his words. I don't want to talk about it, but I am pursuing my own justice, and I won't change my decision. Then he looked me straight in the eye, and the complex emotions I saw there perplexed me. If you feel that this path is not right for you, then don't accept it. The hot sun bore down on me, but I could feel no warmth. What is justice? I was confused. Gavin's justice, Eli's justice, and my justice. This question had weighed on me for a long time. I used to believe that Gavin represented justice. And when my faith in him crumbled, I became lost. The Special Task Force Evolution Accelerator experiments were going well. After the successful modification of the first group of volunteers, they quickly moved on to the second group, followed by the third, and so on. After undergoing the experiment, Eli had changed significantly. He was no longer the casual, flippant Eli who used to drive me crazy. To my surprise, he took on the task of hunting down Gavin without hesitation. Just before his departure, I challenged him to a fight. Enduring the embarrassment of my loss that day, I allowed myself a bitter smile, inadvertently affecting the wound on my cheek. Ouch! That really hurt! His evolved power was much stronger than I imagined. I never stood a chance. But his evil showed signs of instability. At that moment, I wasn't sure if things would go well for Eli, but it was certainly cause for concern. And what I really didn't understand was why the commander was so fixated on Gavin. The air was filled with the cloying scent of disinfectants. I exhaled deeply and quickly headed to the ward at the end of the hall. From the other side of the glass, I saw Eli on the bed, surrounded by medical equipment. He was unconscious. After losing his battle with Gavin that day, he collapsed into an unexplained coma. His vital signs had been fluctuating abnormally ever since. Pressing my hand against the glass, I whispered, So what if you've received the Evol modification? You still lost to Gavin. Of course, the unconscious Eli was unable to leap to his own defense. Back when Gavin was still at STF, he and Eli were close friends, despite the competition between the two. 
Eli had challenged Gavin to 75 duels, all of which had ended in defeat, and this one was no exception. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps could be heard in the hallway. I turned around to find a group of unfamiliar medics approaching Eli's room. A look of panic flashed across their eyes when they saw me. Sir! Narrowing my eyes slightly, I sized them up. You're here to do a checkup? No, sir. We're under orders to transfer Captain Eli. Transfer? I immediately sensed that something was wrong, but I kept it to myself. Where are you taking the captain? I don't know, sir. Seeing the veiled caution in their eyes, I refrained from asking any more questions. But the incident confirmed my suspicions. I secretly contacted some colleagues who had also entered the Evolution Accelerator experiment and received the evil modification. They each exhibited the same change in personality. It was as if they had been transformed into emotionless machines, programmed only to obey orders. At the same time, the commander was expanding the scope of the evil modifications. His orders were urgent and somewhat mandatory. Is he really gathering this massive force that will most likely spiral out of control for the sake of justice? I sat in silence, staring at the black computer screen in front of me. After a moment, I turned it on and sent a message through a secret line that only three people knew about. I received news that Eli had recovered and was ready to return to active duty, but he was still in a coma just a few days ago. I never received a reply from Gavin, and I soon discovered that someone was secretly monitoring my movements. Perhaps I had exposed myself by sending that message? Knock, knock. A special ops agent appeared at my doorstep. Sir, the commander is looking for you. I nodded grudgingly and followed him to the commander's office. No questions asked. Standing by the window, Leto's sharp eyes scanned my face. This mission is to be led by Captain Eli. Do you wish to join him? I wasn't sure what he meant, so I responded as vaguely as I could. At your command, sir. I know many don't agree with the Evolution Accelerator Project, but we need more manpower to take down Black Swan. There was a hint of madness in his eyes. We will prove to the world that we are the righteous ones. I remained silent, but the commander didn't care. His sanity seemed to be slowly peeling away from his psyche, exposing a sliver of his black core. My heart felt heavier than ever. The once calm and stable commander appeared to have gone insane. In the end, I was coerced into joining the mission. In the treacherous ballroom, Gavin single-handedly saved the special task force from ruin. He seemed to have changed a lot, and yet, he was still the same Gavin I wholeheartedly believed in. Commander Leto was dismissed from his post shortly after the mission, and a new commander was expected to arrive at the special task force in the coming days. Of course, STF still needed to function as usual before his arrival. Bang! I dropped a thick pile of files on Eli's desk. Literally buried in paperwork, he had a look of defeat on his face. Ugh, oh, why so many? After the events of the ball, Eli had reverted back to his old casual self. He had agreed to handle this mountain of paperwork, possibly because he felt guilty for having beat me up that one time. Who knows when the new commander will take office? I sighed, wondering what changes would be instated once he does. Eli, on the other hand, appeared completely carefree. He reassured me without raising his head. Don't worry. His reaction sparked an idea in my head. Could the commander possibly be... No, I dismissed the unrealistic thought and asked the question that had been weighing on my mind for so long. Captain Gavin never betrayed us, right? Eli raised his head and flashed a smile. You're right. Gavin always knew what he was doing. And he knew better than anyone else. 
But you can't call him captain anymore. He added. Before I could ask why, an alarm suddenly sounded, interrupting our conversation. Attention, attention, unidentified personnel approaching the base. I immediately turned on the surveillance monitor and watched as a man on a black motorcycle flew by. Eli made a prompt decision. Let's head to the entrance. Upon our arrival at the underground entrance, we saw a figure with his back turned toward us. But we all knew exactly who he was. Exhaling a sigh of relief, Eli took the first step towards him. The system beeped. Agent B7, highest clearance level, granted. Gavin turned around, and Eli solemnly raised his hand and saluted. Welcome back, Commander Gavin. Captain Gavin. No, it's Commander Gavin now. For quite a while, I was dumbfounded by his reappearance. I couldn't put into words how I felt. It's as if I was floating through the clouds. Restraining myself from laughing, I quickened my pace to do my duty. The situation was still not optimistic, but Gavin's return had boosted the morale of the entire force, and we were able to move forward in an orderly fashion. Upon further observation, I could see that Gavin had definitely changed. His evil had become stronger, and he was no longer hard-edged, as if he'd rid himself of some dark shadow that had been weighing on his heart. Sometimes I would catch him calling or texting his lover, with a soft expression on his face. I couldn't help but wonder what kind of girl she was. The peace, however, did not last long. Leto had vanished after the ball incident, and before we could track him down, we received a report that he was holding a group of orphans hostage. This guy has gone totally insane. Enraged, Eli slammed his hand onto the table. Gavin frowned and immediately gave the order. Assemble the team immediately. We're moving out. Now! The order was followed by a tense moment when everyone jumped into action. The mission was divided into two parts, freeing the abducted orphans and rescuing the STF agents who had been taken to receive the EVOL modification. I had a feeling that we would finally put an end to this whole mess. Five minutes later, we were all set. I straightened the color of my uniform and stepped into the command center. The moment I arrived, Gavin looked up and immediately tucked away a picture he had been gazing at. I caught a glimpse of the figure in the photo. It was the girl Eli and I had rescued at the foot of the Loveland TV tower. I remembered the time when Gavin paid a visit to the girl at the hospital. We teased her and called her Mrs. Gavin. Her face turned bright red. Of course, we stopped as soon as Gavin shot us his cold glare. But now, I know we hadn't been mistaken. Everybody ready. Gavin's voice interrupted my thoughts, and I responded immediately. Yes, sir. Ready. Gavin nodded slightly. Good. Let's move out. The special task force had assembled on the open square. Dressed in his white commander uniform, Gavin stood at the front of the formation, like a sharp, unsheathed sword. His expression had lost all its tenderness. Looking out at the force in front of him, he said in a deep voice, Now listen up. The success of this mission is absolutely imperative. We don't know what the situation is, nor can we predict what will happen. But the one thing we know for sure, every one of our bullets will be fired in the name of justice. He paused for a moment, and a smile played across his lips. And finally, I want to say it's an honor to fight alongside you again. Let's move! Eli and I stood in the front row, staring up at Gavin. Failing to keep my excitement in check, I shouted along with the rest of the STF. Yes, Commander! I had long been thinking about what justice means to me. Everyone might have a different answer, but I think my answer is to follow the new Commander without hesitation. To push forever forward 
regardless of what thorns may lie in the path along the way. It is my great honor to fight side by side with you.